some things in life you have to see to believe. And some things, even if you see them, you still can't believe them. We heard the numbers were up, so decided to come back down. And that's why year after year, people rise before the sun does here and gather by the water's edge. Wow. In hopes that this year, they might finally believe what they're about to see. Yeah, a lot of people miss out when they sleep in. The first sense that gets to experience this phenomenon is not sight, but sound. You can hear them in the background right now, just getting ready for the day. A constant droning in the darkness, like an overture warming up the crowd before the show as everyone takes their seats. As far as wildlife goes, this is spectacular. Every winter for just a few weeks, the Middle Creek Reservoir in Northern Lancaster County fills with snow geese. Oh my gosh. And so does the sky. They just keep on coming. Waves of white feathered migrants follow the sun and stars to get to this point every year on their flight back north. Just. <laughs> <laughs> And on their way, they dazzle the crowd with aerial acrobatics. But they're coming back. At their peak, close to 100,000 snow geese, sometimes more, will stop here. You can't not look. And when they're all together, <laughs> floating on the water and seemingly as still as can be. They've settled back down. That's when they perform their greatest trick. So we should get another little blast shortly. The takeoff. That is a whole lot of geese up in the air. It's kind of a rush, you know, when you when you hear them take off and when they go over your head and the sound and the, and the sight is just wonderful. The echo of tens of thousands of flapping wings cuts across the lake. Man, does that fill up the sky, though? <laughs> it's just incredible. It gives you chills. And it's not the cold weather. <laughs> But the snow geese don't perform for long, only a few minutes a day while they're here. That is a pretty shot. That's why the show, in a way, is a bit of magic. You have to be here on the right day and at the right time to see it. And no matter how many times you've seen it before, this dizzying dance on the water and in the air always seems to leave you with the same impression. Oh my. <laughs> that it's just Unbelievable. Wow. At Middle Creek, Matt Barcaro, WGAL News 8. No one likes going to the hospital for surgery, especially not oral surgery. Give me five. Especially as a six year old, right? <laughs> so then why is Isabella Zink laughing? And is, in her words, happy, very, very, I am. very happy. To get two teeth pulled. It shouldn't take too long. When I told her about it, she just nonstop talked about it. And Isabella is not the only one. I wasn't expecting it to be as big of a hit. The new way pediatric patients are getting to the operating room at Wellspan York Hospital is such a hit that the kids are literally racing to get there. Each kid gets a turn beyond on the car. And are driving themselves. There's only one seat. This battery-powered sports car is replacing the stretcher. You can follow me. And because of it, the kids are cruising and are much more calm before surgery. I like it because it gets cool on the inside. It's just the distraction they need. Foot on the pedal, mind off the procedure. When your kid go to bed early on time, when she don't do it for school, she does it for the hospital. <laughs> just so she can ride the cart, it's just an awesome, it's awesome. And medically, the nurses say this is better for the kids. They don't need to be sedated before the surgeries, and their better moods lead to better results. These kids are waking up happy, and they had good dreams, and they're just happy to talk about the car instead of crying and wondering where mom is or, or they're scared because they're in a new environment. Isabella was so excited about her hospital hallway ride, she didn't even want to stop to say goodbye. Wait, wait, stop. Back up, back up, back up, back up. But she did to help wait, her stop. mom. Thank you. Now give mommy kisses. Good luck. I love you. All that's left now is to drive to surgery and fall to sleep. But she can't sleep until she parks that car. And getting her to stop it might actually be harder than pulling teeth. In York, Matt Barcaro, WGAL News 8. Let's see what we can find him. Whenever Holly Selig needs a quiet place to recharge, a little escape from the day to day, she doesn't have far to go. Might have to wade into the middle. Because right in her backyard is an oasis that transforms in front of her. It's peaceful. After working all day, this is where I want to be.
But this isn't just her sanctuary. Can you get it for me? It's theirs, too. Once you know what you're looking for, it's they jump out at you. Hundreds of butterflies, monarchs, in every stage of their lives growing in her garden. That is one of the eggs. In fact, so many monarchs stop in Holly's garden during their migration to Mexico every year. There you go. Her home outside Gettysburg has been designated an official monarch butterfly way station. So bring them in here. I know I'm making a difference. She has already raised, recorded, and released more than 800 of them just this summer. It's so cool to do this. I never thought, ever, ever, ever thought I would be doing something like this. But the butterflies share more than an address with Holly. They remind her of family, specifically her mom, Joan, who died from breast cancer. It was at her funeral three years ago when a butterfly first caught Holly's eye. I walked over to it, just not even thinking, just put my hand out and it crawled on my finger and it sat there. For the rest of the service, that butterfly greeted the guests and stayed close the entire time. It grew into this. And when Holly got home, she let her backyard fill with milkweed, the monarch caterpillar's only source of food, and watched the memories of her mom multiply. They're just, they're all over. Being out here, it's like I'm continually getting reminded that I'm not alone, that she is still with me. And there's something about the butterfly's transformation that speaks to Holly, the metamorphosis that puts wings on a worm hundreds of times a year. She gets it. Just when a caterpillar thought its life was over, it turned into a butterfly. And just when I thought my life was over, when I lost my mom, I experienced this, and I can see this life that I can help. It's become her metamorphosis, too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a lasting way to honor her best friend, because no matter how many butterflies flit and flutter away, what they represent remains, and that will never change. In Cumberland Township, Matt Barcaro, WGAL News 8. When you see reactions like these at the farm show, usually something big is happening. She's the queen. But not in the Northwest Hall. What's going on here is exactly the opposite. She's just adorable. She gets a lot of attention. Mako, the Nigerian dwarf goat, lives up to her breed's name. She's tiny, all of 20 pounds, and basking in the spotlight of her first farm show. She had squirrely little hairs everywhere, so. Kind of just clean her up. Whatever Mako is doing, wherever she goes, there seems to always be people watching. I'll have to start your own Instagram page, I guess. <laughs> the thing is, Mako is not used to the attention, this being her first farm show. And at just shy of six months old, she's yet to shake her bout of stage fright. She hot. <laughs> but can you blame her? Already the smallest goat in her class, she also drew the biggest following all watching as Mako wiggled and wrestled around the ring to an eventual third place finish. Out of our third place individual today. And when her little legs had had enough, she was finished too. You did really good with her. <laughs> you kept your cool. You did all right. But you'd never know Mako didn't make out with the crown. Your face looks like you're a duck, not a goat. Because she most certainly won over the crown. Hi. And that must count for something. You are the cutest goat. And so if uh, you weren't able to see Mako, don't worry, her owner Maddie from Schuylkill County told me that she will be back next year at the farm show. She'll be a little bigger, but she is a Nigerian dwarf goat, so she won't be much bigger than that.